I was given a video of Donald Trump during a break in the deposition in the Trump University fraud case. And he doesn't know the camera's running. And he and his lawyer, Dan Petrocelli, have a conversation. Here's my full commentary on this hot mic video. Let's see what happened. Job. Thank you. I feel like. And you're not even complaining in this. It's a tough record to get down. <laughs> Now, as you can tell, we can't hear everything so well. There's a lot of room noise, so it comes in and out what we can hear. You know, bits of conversation, sometimes clearer than other bits of conversation. Yeah, you know, we're going to want the, the whole works, but we'll, okay. we'll call you. Oh, thank you. I'll have some of my colleagues give you a call, okay, to order everything. Yes, yeah, don't, don't worry about him. He, I have him under control. I had a good meeting with him. Alan, Alan joined the meeting, so he can tell you that. The lawyers for the other side have not come back to the room. That's what they're waiting on. Has someone sort of friend with that? Yes. So your name is Hi. Eileen. I think we've worked Mo together before. Well, can you just go back? I've worked with a lot of reporters, but we're pretty good. What's the time? You I love say? your phone. I don't know. My... I have a friend that works there. Uh, they email. Oh, you're, you're not from New York, though. New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. Oh, you're from New Jersey. Valerie Cohen, do you know Valerie Cohen? I don't know. You turn your Obviously, Trump doesn't look happy to be here. There's you know, chit chat going on. He's, you know, they, they had a big blow up before they took this break. He's waiting for the lawyers on the other side to get back so he can get done with this. And he is suffering through this. What are we going to plan to do? Well, we're leaving at five anyway. How much time has he done? How much time has he done? On the record. On the record. On the record. Try hitting a cup on the record. Yeah. I feel the same way as you, Mr. Trump, at this point. <laughs> so crazy. What's amazing? Oh, that was it. That was it. I was you. A little over four hours. What am I supposed to say? Seven. By the time we finish here, we'll only have two hours left, and we'll worry about it another third time. It'll be one year now, I guess. So, you know, they're arguing about how long he's going to be there. Um, another hour today, then two more hours and another time. And I'm just looking at the transcript here that we made of this. Um, you know, he's, well, he's going to get into talking about the case. Yeah, thanks. I know. It's really the judge did not hear And you shocked at that, right? I am. See, now he just said, and it's kind of hard to hear, he said, you know, they made this personal. They made this personal. Now, he's not talking about personal in terms of attacking him. He's talking about the fact that he's been held personally responsible for the accused fraud at Trump University. And so he's asking his lawyer, you know, how can this be a personal case? I have a corporation. You know, that's why we have corporations, so I can't be sued. It's kind of what he's saying. And his lawyer is saying, well, you know... Um, you know, this is what happened, and this is how, you know, the judge did not throw this out, and this is uh, how, how, how the case is going forward. Um, but what did he say here that, um, um, you know, everywhere, he goes, every, this is classic Trump, right? Everywhere we've asked, they say, how could it be so personal? We've asked all the, in other words, we've asked all the attorneys, and no one can get this, no one can get this. Um, and, you know, you'll, you'll see, you know, he goes on in this vein. I'm going to say... That's what made me feel like I had to take it out. I mean, there's a reason for cooperation. Is there something you can do about it? Yeah, because if you could win that, we're in the case. Exactly right. Exactly right. You're the only reason why this case is going on. Because of that. So what can you do about it? You have one more shot at it. Where? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, what about the other case? He just denied this. <laughs> and Bristol did? Against you personally. How could he do that? You know, I've got hundreds of cases that have been coming against me. Because they're saying you, I've got you, you were personally involved in making 
so there he says, I have hundreds of cases and I don't ever get sued personally. And the lawyer says, well, that's because in this case, they are saying you are personally involved in making false statements. And if you looked at the video, the promotional videos of for Trump University. At Trump University, we teach success. That's what it's all about, success. It's going to happen to you. Trump University was one of the many failed business ventures of Donald Trump. It was set up to sell people the secrets of his success, but it didn't work out that way for a lot of the people who took the courses, and they sued. They sued Donald Trump personally because he put out promotional material saying that he handpicked the instructors who knew how they could teach you how to be like him. We're going to have professors and adjunct professors that are absolutely terrific. We are going to have the best of the best. And honestly, if you don't learn from them, if you don't learn from me, if you don't learn from the people that we're going to be putting forward, and these are all people that are handpicked by me, then you're just not going to make it in terms of the world of success. And now he's claiming, well, I didn't know that much about it. It's classic Trump. False statements, but they can't prove it. That's the only reason. So can you now, at the end of all their positions, go and just pull the judge again because they were there to go there? I'm going to have to think about what it is. I'm still not thinking it's going to be shot. Is he just going to get into a ladder, I think? You really think so? I do. Okay, so that was hard to hear again, but now they're talking about the judge, Judge Gonzalo Curiel, who's handling the case. And Trump asks his lawyer, is he an asshole or, and we can't make out what's on the other side of the or. And the lawyer says, latter, I think. And then Trump says, you really think so? You know him a little bit, don't you? And let's hear what the lawyer says. You know him a little bit, right? I do, yeah. He's, he's, he's a average judge. He's from the wrong side of the aisle, too. That's not helping. So he says he's an average judge. He's and he was appointed by a Democrat. So that's not going to help you. Now, the next bit that comes on is very intriguing. Uh, let's see if you can make it out. And, um, and then I'll say what, what what tell you what it is. Well, the first well, these were to test the so what Trump says Right after the lawyer says, you know, he's the Democrat, that doesn't help. Trump says, what about the Spanish thing? Then there's some words that are really hard to, to make out. So the question obviously is, what's the Spanish thing that he's talking about? Now, you might remember a few months later, he accused, you know, he said that the judge was a Donald Trump hater, was after him because he had been born in Mexico. His name is Gonzalo Curiel. Wrong. He was born in Indiana. <laughs> so he wasn't Mexican. But this seems to suggest that early on, Trump wanted to make an argument, maybe even the courtroom, uh, maybe in front of the judge, that the judge was biased against him. You know who it is? She's not this guy, nothing. That's just a strong. So he just said, with this guy, nothing, nothing. So he's looking for some angle here to undermine challenge, win, a, win the case after this, uh, against this judge. And, but as of now, nothing. Well, that's, that's why you have to strike when you were the iron top. This happened many times to you over the years. It's over the judge and you've got a problem. For sure. I didn't think we wanted to do this case. Oh, yeah. If we had to try this case, I think we would win this case. I think you're a big reason why, because I think the jury's going to like you. You're being honest. You think? Okay, so now Trump is saying to the lawyer, you know, what do you think? How are we, we going to win this case? Is this a good case? And he goes, if we have to try it, I think we'll win because juries like you because you're honest. That's what the lawyer says. And then Trump is going to like press him further on whether this case is winnable. Do you think it's an easy one? 
Um, not a slam dunk one by any two cases, but I, I put it in my gut. So Trump says it's an easy case, and the lawyer says, I put it at about 50%. Now they're going to talk about an earlier part of the case where they were arguing about damages and whether you could do the damages in a class action way, whether every individual had to come forward to claim their own damages if they lose the case. About 50%. And by the way, we also we did the only good one we did get is we have to try their damages separately, right? When we won that. Just so they kill. They got to have open separate cases for everybody to get back. We have the values we have. And that's just getting played out right now. But isn't that a great win for us? That's a significant win. I like how Trump is still looking for a win, right? They got the judge to agree with him on one uh, point about damages, and he's going, isn't this a great win? Isn't it a great win? Uh, but the big win they didn't get was when the judge certified this as a class action case, meaning you don't have to, you know, you round up the plaintiffs, you have one big case, and you don't have to break it into a lot of little cases. So it's really stronger if you can have a class action case. The judge doesn't know what to do with this. He doesn't know what to do with this. Yeah. Yeah. He made the wrong decision certifying this as a class action. If we had to decertify, would we essentially walk oh, yeah, that is all. Didn't we almost have a decertified by him doing that? He had it half decertified exactly. Because now everybody's got to come in and improve their own individual damages so we're trying to keep them on. Where are these great folks who are resonating with them? He is on the other line right now. Hey, Dan, you want to get your colleagues? Sure. So now they're asking where the other lawyers are. They're, they've been waiting for five minutes and they're getting impatient. Actually waited 10 minutes, by the way. It was five minutes, not 10. Uh, we were here for a half an hour at lunch. One of the lawyers on the other side said, we waited for you for half an hour. Thanks. This is really fascinating. I wish we could hear more. Uh, but it's not just your ears. You know, they go back to what they were talking about. And Trump says something like, go in there and say, mm, we can't make it out. That thing about him. You understand? Let's go and do that thing. Do that thing. Say that thing. And the lawyer, Dan Petricelli, is going to say, I'll give it a shot. I'll see what I can do. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Just see what, I, see what I can do. Okay, and the other thing is... Okay, let's wait. We'll talk separately. So, and there's another thing, and they're going to talk about it later. I, we give that a shot after this. Do I need to do anything more than that? Yes. Do you want to rock? And there he's still talking about something we don't fully, you know, comprehend. He goes, boom, maybe you'll get lucky. Just a reminder, uh, this deposition began about 10 a.m. in the morning. It is now shortly after 4 p.m. So Trump has been going through this for about six hours with some breaks. Is your video machine ready, hey, Keith, yes, Keith. ready to go? Any calls upstairs, just check. Okay. Uh, and now he's talking to his chief security guy, body man, Keith Schiller, Seems to say any calls upstairs, go on, go and check. Just check with the phone. Yeah. And here he. Back to complaining, I've had some crazy cases. This shouldn't be much of a case. I've had some crazy cases. Oh, I don't know. 
he, Bach, when he said, but he called tomorrow. He just wanted to catch up. So, do you know where the rest of these lawyers are? Uh, they look at these. Yeah, you haven't seen them. They might be in the yeah, back end. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go get them? Yeah, yeah. we'd like to get rolling. Yeah. I think you should put them on the record. We've been waiting for Jimmy. Yeah, because you know what? They'll say we left and we came back and had them. When did we start our break? And here we're back to arguing about who took a longer break during the day. Uh, remember, we're, we're, this is in a conference room at Trump Tower. They've obviously put up some screen behind there to block out whatever we might see of this room. And the lawyers are off on the other side are off. They're trying to print something out and they're having trouble doing that. We were there for five, we were there for five minutes. The time we have now. Where is it? Four eight. We were back by three fifty eight. Five after four. No, it's eight after four. It is? Well, it's on my What do you have? Yeah, it's five after my um computers are more fast. I can't tell, but is Trump actually winding his watch there? Does he have? A, does he wear a watch you have to wind? I don't know. <laughs> and now, while he's waiting, he's going to ask Dan Pacelli about a man named Barack. It's not Barack Obama. I believe it seems to be Tom Barrack, who is a wealthy Republican fundraiser, friend of Donald Trump, um, someone who raised a lot of money for him, who he's known a long time. And he's going to be surprised by some news about this close personal friend of his. All right, Dave. All right, Dave. How's up, Barrack, man? Okay. The Barrack. He's uh, got a new bride, a couple new kids. What's that all about? <laughs> he didn't know that his friend Tom Barrack had gotten married sometime the previous year. When did he get married? Got married. Uh, and what was the first question he asked? I don't know if you caught that, but the first question he asked was, is she beautiful? And Petricelli says, young, yeah, she's 38, she's 37. 38, 37. How long does he look? Oh, I want to say 65. He think he's like 67. He was actually 69 at the time. He gets a kick out of this whole person. Bullshit. With everything on your mind, I don't know how you're doing this. I really, I really feel bad for you. Now, that's either a very empathetic lawyer or someone who's kissing you know what. That's Dan Petricelli saying, with everything on your mind, I don't know how you're doing this. I feel really bad for you. I'm having a problem with the printer, but they'll be here in two minutes to get. Okay. Printing something to learn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we went out for five minutes. They went out right after us. They did. What's the printer? Or they didn't print it. To show you some other stupid thing. Somebody said. Oh, you're right. So you'll have a whole. You'll be like, you'll be getting a little better than 50 million. I'm surprised. What do you have? You never go above 70%. Yeah. Okay, so here we have him going back to the issue of how strong a case is this? And he says to Petrocelli, you ever do better than 50%, meaning do you ever tell your clients that you have a better than 50% chance of winning a case? He goes, um, well, we just heard Petrocelli say, you never go above 70% in a case. Even if it's a lock. Yeah. Trump says, even if it's a lock? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he says, there's an X factor. I mean, if you think you have a lock, you're not going to tell the client. I have the never gone above seventy five percent. So if you think you have a lock, you still don't tell your client it's a lock. Trump asked him. And Petrocelli says, I have never gone above seventy five percent. Now Trump is gonna think about this and then talk about how he describes his own chances to win the Republican nomination. Remember it's December twenty fifteen. He's win he's leading in the polls, but there have been no votes yet. Somebody said, What's your chances of getting the nomination? I said fifty. Even though I'm 40 in there. Do you understand? It's a smart answer. No, I don't want to say, oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. No, I don't think it's my question. So Trump says if they don't ask him, 
his chances of getting the nomination. He says 50% because he's at 40% in the polls at the time. That may or may not be true. I can go back and look. And he says, but I don't want to say I'm going to get it. So, the, you know. But this is one of the strong cases. Do right? you rate this as a... Right I would rate this as an uh, above average, but I've had strong cases. But I've had cases. I, I don't think that, I think the guys on the sort of let me down. They're really sloppy. This is a pretty uh, key line here because Trump is pushing to say it's a lock. And he says, um, well, I would rate this. This is he, the attorney, Dan Petricelli. I would rate this as above average, I've, but I've had stronger cases. And one reason it's not, he's not giving Trump a stronger prediction is because he says, your guys were, quote, a little sloppy. <laughs> And here it's hard to hear what Trump's saying. Seems to be, can you do something on another so it doesn't affect me? Other than like it's just like an outright lie. No, this way it's right. There's a cover. Now they're just talking about some details about the case. Cover for it. Uh, you can give us the guy. <sighs> but the one thing that uh, you know looks really good is what we're what you're being taken through all the courts now, but you're not being taken through the ninety five percent of the course that went really well in this. He had all kinds of monitors. He had a legal compliance program. Can I say? And now Trump is going to say, you know, basically, this is all bunk. Look at what I did for these people. Everybody was involved in this. Everybody was so professional. That's why I was here. You're right. We're being king of a house. So that probably is. But you know what? That's why I'm here. And the other thing is so here Trump is saying everybody who was involved in Trump University was so professional and the people who went there walked out with books and charts and piles of stuff. I think you'll be better than 50%. You know, Now they're going to talk about, Trump is bringing this up, how the Better Business Bureau, which reviews businesses, charities, nonprofits, treated Trump University. Better Business Bureau, even in a... Okay, so he says the Better Business Bureau gave it an A. Then he lowers his voice and he says something we can't make out. And he says, gave it a D. A D. Do you know what that is? It's a kill for you. And he goes on. So now he's saying, and you can't make out all the words, but somebody called them up, presumably the Better Business Bureau, and said, and again, he's lowering his voice, I'm going to sue you. An A? They got an A. Got the D removed. So here he goes back. You know, he's telling the story again. Do you know we were rated D? Then they get interrupted by the lawyer for the other side, and that's basically the end of the conversation as they get ready to go into the deposition. 
But um, in this case, it seems as if Trump is bragging that they got a D to an A by threatening to sue the Better Business Bureau. We've called the Better Business Bureau to ask what happened, and I haven't heard from them. But a few months later, during one of the res Republican presidential primary debates, Megyn Kelly, when she was a Fox News host, asked him about the D rating that the Better Business Bureau had received. And Trump got all huffy and said, no, we got an A, we got an A. And, and then during the break, he was waving a piece of paper at some of the journalists there saying, we just got this. The Better Business Bureau just sent this in and shows that we got an A. Days later, the Better, Better Business Bureau said, we didn't send anything in. And they explained that his rating or the Trump University rating had vacillated between D minus and an A. Uh, but what happens is their bad ratings are based usually on complaints that people send in to the Better Business Bureau. But complaints roll off uh, a, a business or subject after three years or so. So they said in 2014, 2015 or so, the rating for Trump University went up to an A. Well, it closed in 2010. So what happened was, you know, it wasn't really operating anymore. And the complaints rolled off that had brought it down to a D minus. And that's why it rose to an A. Apparently, no complaints make you an, give you an A rating. It's pretty easy A to make, it seems. But so, you know, that's a bit of a different story than what Trump is telling here about the threat of a lawsuit somehow raising the grade. Is he bragging? Is he telling the truth? We don't know. Sorry, I'm trying to print, but it's not working. I'm just going to do it verbally. Is it, is it my machine's fault? That's terrible. <laughs> it is terrible, but that's all right. That's okay. Well, let's I'll go back. I'll have to get into the details. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, you will. <laughs> like the escalators. We'll, we'll talk about it. And now the We're elevators. Saying, I got it. That's it. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm going to. And here they went back to the deposition. And one of the first things they did once they got back on the record was argue about who took a longer break. And the lawyers, the plaintiffs said, we waited for you for half an hour at lunchtime. Petrocelli said, well, you know, we gave you, we, we, you know, at least you could eat the free food we gave you. Now, apparently they provided lunch for them. And the lawyer for the plaintiff said, no, we didn't eat it. And Trump says, what? You didn't eat my food? And they got back into it. For the full story and all the videos, go to motherjones.com.